Welcome back to 90 Spunk Recovers. My name is Sam and in today's video, I will share with you how I EQ my guitar amps. Now I've gotten this question a lot on the comment section of my videos, basically asking me, how do you achieve the tone that you do on some of the guitar covers that you do? Now there's no right or wrong answer to this and there's no right or wrong way of doing it. And there are literally about a hundred different variables on how to achieve a specific type of tone. So I'm just gonna give you guys a simple kind of breakdown of how I approach an amp for the first time and basically dial it in from beginning to end. Now bear in mind that there are, like I said, there are tons of variables about it, uh, specifically the guitar that you use, the amp that you use, the speakers, the pickups. So all of those things will give you a different sound. And also it depends on what kind of music do you like? What, uh, what type, what's your style? How do you play? So again, this is not a right or wrong answer. It's just information to give you guys at least the way I approach things. So I hope this is entertaining to you and you learn something from it. Now I wanted to do this video a little bit differently and I wanted to record using microphones as opposed to going into my torpedo um, live like I normally record. Uh, since I live in an apartment, I really can't make much noise, but I figured that for this type of scenario, I wanted to give you guys more of a in-room type of sound. Um, and so basically I'm, I'm micing up my cabinet using two different mics, a Sur SM57 and an AKG 214, again, to give you that in-room kind of sound, as opposed to going and using impulse responses like I normally record. Um, also, I, I'm using this amp. This is my Friedman Smallbox 50, which is a hot rod and Marshall. You guys have seen this in some of my videos. It's one of my favorite amps. And the reason why I picked this amp is because it's got a very simple EQ layout. Uh, it's got two channels, channel one being a plexi clean kind of sound and channel two more of a hot rodded late 70s Marshall uh, sound. Again, very simple amp, not a lot of switches and uh, straightforward. So I, I really love that about this amp. And for the guitar, I'm using my 1999 Gibson Les Paul Classic. You, have, you guys have seen it before. It uh, was my first Les Paul that I ever bought. All right, so the first thing I do when I approach an amp is obviously have everything set at noon, uh, basically five on your, on your dial, and start from there. So let's just kind of give you guys what it sounds like, just basically the way it is right now. I'll play some power chords and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not, it's not a bad sounding tone right now, but I feel like it could, you know, uh, improve a little bit, at least how I normally, uh, you know, dial it in. So the first thing, first thing that I do is I dial down the bass. Um, I like to play, you know, with a little bit more treble than bass. Normally, uh, I prefer that kind of like crunchier kind of in your face sound. So, I don't play with a lot of the bass, but uh, this amp is very tight. So even if you turn the bass up, you know, more than normal, you still have a very tight or responsive amp. But again, I go for a particular type of sound. So I dial my bass probably about, you know, three and a half on the, on the dial. So let's see what that makes, if, if that makes any difference right now. still sounds, uh, it, could, it, it could be tweaked a little bit. So we'll leave the bass around uh, three and a half, like I said. And after that, I like to go to the treble, which is my favorite dial. And uh, I normally, let's start with six and see how it sounds now. So give it a little bit more top end. So it's, it's, it's getting there. Um, I might dial it, might, I might dial in a little bit more treble later on, but I'll leave it like this for now. So from here on, you have basically presence, middle, and your gain, you know. I'm not counting the volume because I have the volume set to how I want to record this video. So uh, next up, I will probably go with the middle. Uh, I will add mids. Uh, I play with, you know, moderately high mids. 
Um, I don't like to scoop them out. I feel like they rob a lot of the tone in, 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 you know, in general. So right now it's at five. So let's, let's bump it up to six. Let's bump it up to six and see how it sounds right now. So it's still a very flat EQ for the most part. Nothing crazy here. So let's see. <laughs> Sounding a little bit better to my ears. Uh, now the presence, it's a dial that I usually uh, dial at the end. So basically to, to kind of pinpoint the sound that I want and uh, give it that kind of like final touch. So I usually leave that EQ knob all the way until the end. So uh, let's play around with it, bump it up a little bit more and see how it sounds. Let's go to six again. So basically I got everything set around the same um, EQ position uh, minus the bass right now. So let's see. Okay, so that's more or less what I typically do for the most part. Uh, I will, I'm happy with that sound. Uh, hopefully it sounds good recorded, but in a room it sounds really good to my ears. Um, so again, I'm, I don't play with a lot of gain. I usually keep my gain either at noon or one o'clock. So right now it's been at noon. So let's bump it up to six and see how much difference does that make. Probably won't make much, but let's see. Okay, so still good enough. Uh, I can crank it up a little bit more, but that's kind of like the sweet spot for me uh, around six o'clock. I mean, sorry, six on the knob, so it will be one o'clock. Um, so let's play around with a little bit more treble. Let's go to seven. Take, get a little more top end. I'll leave the bass where it's at. Right now it's sitting almost at four and the mid at six. So let's bump the mids to six and a half. Uh, leave the presence where it is and let's see.
Okay, that, I like that tone. That's, a, that's a kind of like where I will basically start off with when I want to record a video or a cover. Um, and like I said, it, I will dial it in a little bit differently depending on the song and obviously the amp that I use, but that's basically how I normally, uh, you know, dial in any amp. For example, the Mesa Boogie, the rectifier has a lot more bass. So that one, I actually have to dial back the bass even further than, or more than what I have on this amp. Uh, let's just bump up the bass now and see how it sounds. Uh, like I said, this amp is very tight. So even if I crank it up, let's go to five and a half, see how it sounds. And let's just to be crazy, let's go to seven and a half on the gain there. See how it sounds. So I just dialed back the mids, added more bass and added more gain on this and see how it sounds now. I like it. <laughs> uh, obviously that's a little bit too much for like a lot of game for what I play, but uh, yeah, this amp can, can do a lot. So, I mean, you guys can see, I mean, hopefully this translates well on the recording, but uh, uh, that's basically what I, what I do. Uh, again, my stock settings will be presence around six, uh, bass dial back around, you know, four, three and a half, mids bumped up to about six and a half, treble seven and gain usually around one o'clock. So that's kind of like what I do. Let's just play that one more time. And uh, I think that will wrap up the video. So let's uh, go back here. Let's go to four here and see. <laughs>
All right, I think that's enough to, uh, I don't want to piss off my neighbors way too much. Uh, I think I've made a lot of noise as it is. So, uh, all right, well, this is it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully it gives you some information as to how you can dial in your amp or how to approach it. And um, again, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, look me up on Instagram, follow me there as well. And I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers.